Okay, in today's video, I'm going to look at a new large language model, or rather a new fine tuning to create a new model. So late last week, Databricks announced their own kind of new model or their new fine tuning called Dolly. And this has been response to Alpaca in that the Llama models were never really open source, right? Or people couldn't use it for commercial things, etc. So what they did was they looked around and they found a model that was released by a Luther AI called GPTJ 6 billion. And this is a 6 billion parameter model. And they basically trained this up on the Alpaca data set to create Dolly. And this is what they're calling Dolly. I think they talk about it in this blog post that Dolly is based on the clone sheep that was called Dolly. That's where they got their name from. They didn't release the weights. They basically made it so you could contact them, I think, for the weights or something like that. Because this model is already open source and has been up on Hugging Face for quite a while, I thought I would just train up and fine tune one myself. And rather than use the original Alpaca data set, I use this data set, which is basically a clean version of it. So it turns out apparently that in the 52,000 examples, there are actually quite a number of examples that were not very good, that they had hallucinations, that they had things done incorrectly. And so what this person here on GitHub has done, and maybe with a group of other people as well, is they've gone through and actually cleaned up the data set to make it more accurate. So I thought it'd be also interesting to take a Luther model and fine tune it on this data set. And what we ended up with was Laura fine tuning of Dolly. So here is the notebook that I'm just going to go through. I'm just going to go through the inference in this video. If you want to see me talk about the fine tuning or something, let me know. I can make a video for that. It's very similar to what I did for the Llama fine tuning. And I might actually make an updated video of that one because things have changed a little bit now. Rather than import any special versions of Hugging Face, I'm just bringing in the latest version from GitHub here. And we're bringing in the PEF library and bits and bytes to be able to load this in 8-bit and then so we can do a LoRa fine tuning. This was pretty standard. This is basically just loading it up also for you to be able to use it and then testing it out. Here I've put a simple a sort of example of the prompt. So remember it's trained on the same or, or similar data set to the original Alpaca. It's just a clean version of that data set. So this is definitely an instruction fine tuning data set. The issues that is this going to be competitive with the actual original one? And you find that the answers that it gives are not bad. So you can see here when we ask it about alpacas, what's the difference between alpacas and sheep? Because Dolly's a sheep. It's able to tell us some quite good results in, and it tends to go on and gives you quite interesting results. But I would say on the whole, the results are not as good as the original alpaca, which is trained on Llama. Now, obviously that doesn't mean this model is not good, right? This is also really great because this we can commercially use. If you were to fine tune this on your own synthetic data set, you would be able to use it, which you can't do with the Llama model there. So one of the things that causes this to perhaps not be as good as the Llama models as a base model for fine tuning is the actual number of tokens that it's trained on. From memory, somewhere here, I was looking at it here. This model was trained up for 402 billion tokens. Now we know that the Llama model was trained for a trillion tokens for the 7 billion and the 13 billion parameter versions and 1.4 trillion for the 30 billion and the 65 billion parameter versions. So. This is definitely at a disadvantage as a base model compared to the original Llama. That said though, it's still not bad. You can put in your instructions. And like I said, asking at the difference between alpacas and sheep, it's giving good coherent responses. If I ask it to generate some code, you can see that, okay, it's got a bunch of different things that it can look at doing code. Now, sometimes they will be correct and sometimes they will not be correct. So. This one, I think when I did it earlier, was generating something that was pretty good, whereas now it seems to be maybe not as good. And you can see I've asked it, okay, write an email explaining, uh, should be why GPT-4 should be open source. Okay. And we'll see that it thinks that GPT-4 is from Google. Let's just run this one again and see if we can get a better response. Now you'll find that the generation speed is actually going to be pretty slow on this model. 
and you will need a pretty beefy GPU just to be able to get this running and get it working. Okay, so here's our result. Write an email explaining why GPT-4 should be open source. So GPT-4 has been developed by Google and it's important to make sure its algorithms are accessible to everyone, including researchers who want to study them. So you can see that it's very plausible responses that we're getting here. And it is good in many ways in that we wouldn't expect it to know necessarily that GPT-4 is trained by OpenAI, although you, possibly you could. Anyway, obviously the GPT-J model was trained a long time before GPT-4 came out. So there aren't facts about that in there. But you could fine tune this model for a very specific use here, because you see that what it is generating is very plausible text. And this is one of the things that we're looking for in these models. So this would benefit from more fine tuning and more fine tuning on a very specific data set for a very specific use. So anyway, I just made this quick video so that you could see how to do inference with this. The notebook will be in the description as always. This is Dolly. If you've seen people talking about it on Twitter, if you've seen people talking about it around, you can have a play with it yourself and try it out and compare it yourself to the alpaca model and to some of the other models that we've looked at. In the next few videos later this week, I'm going to be looking at some other models too that I think are really interesting as alternatives to Llama that are coming out as well. So this is something that will be very interesting. As always, if this was useful to you, please click and subscribe. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye for now.